Guess what? It's April and it's time for your tarot reading. I'm sorry I lost my voice. That's why they're a little bit late and that's also why it sounds like shit, but let's get started. Sub Scorpios, this is April 2019. So we are going to look at your social and emotional well-being this month. Um, we're going to look at your career and money and then also your love life, whether you are single coupled or in a non-defined relationship, which could be something polyamorous, on again, off again. Uh, maybe it's new, so it's not really official. So let's just get started. Um, I decided to put your power crystal of the month and uh, your lucky days of the month in an email that'll go out uh, in a couple days. So if you're not on my email list, you should be because that's how you're entered to win the 20 minute free personal reading um, every month. And I only send one email a month. So it's not like when you sign up for a webinar or for emails from, you know, uh, Kohl's and then they email you all the time or Target. So uh, let's just get started. If you're looking at mobile and you want to sign up, it's like a little green smiley face icon, which isn't like obvious if you're not on a desktop computer. Okay, here we go. So your social and emotional well-being, Scorpio. What they're saying is that um, it's taking an exorbitant amount of time for the seeds that you've planted to kind of deliver, you know, so you might have been making some healthy changes maybe after the new year, for example, and it's just taking forever to see the results of those things. Now, I don't necessarily mean like New Year's resolutions, just things that you've done in general, whether that is working on your emotional health, um, you know, creating more time for rest, relaxation, and self-care, that kind of stuff, like the benefits of it are taking forever to show up. Uh, but what they're saying is, if you really think about it, you can start to see some movement as far as your emotional state goes from a place of more like wild and, and choppy, like bigger pendulum swings from high to low and more areas of like passivity and calmness. They say you're slightly more optimistic than you have been historically. Um, but the rise is so slow and steady that it's hard to notice unless you go backwards and think about the past, but you are on the right track. What they're saying is you, part of you knows this, but it's much more obvious if you think about where you were like a year ago or six months ago, um, how much more control you have. They say this comes from a place of being really honest with yourself and with other people, even if there was no decision to make. You know, it's kind of like, for example, it would, it would be like, hey man, you can't text me so much. It drives me bonkers. And asserting that boundary without saying we can't be friends. It's like you're, you're starting to set boundaries, but then not necessarily, you know, cutting people entirely off. Some people might have taken it that way and drifted away, but even if they did, it's going to create this space of more calm and clarity for you in your life. So it's not actually a bad thing. What they're saying is like there are still people around you that care about you and the people that are there are supposed to be. So I wouldn't feel sad about any of that. Like anybody who's kind of just like vibrating out of your life as your vibration raises. What they're saying here is that, um, you know, you're in this position where people look at you and they admire you and you're kind of um, one of these people that is maybe not easy to approach and, you know, so many other signs had this. Pisces had it. I think Aries had it. Leo's had it. Where, you know, you're kind of just shining and vibrating this really awesome version of yourself, even if people aren't noticing it. Or, I mean, people are noticing it, but they're not commenting on it. So what they're saying is you don't have to give anyone or anything any more of your time, energy, money, etc., because you just kind of existing in the world is awesome and it's a gift to the planet. So what a compliment, huh? Um, what they're saying is 
Now, some of you might feel towards the middle of the month that it's easier to focus on what's going wrong than what's going right, but then just kind of remember that this is a journey and you're not perfect 100% of the time and you're still doing a lot better emotionally as well as probably socially, even if you're like, okay, well, I, I, what do you mean I'm doing better socially? I have less friends than I did before for some of you. Some of you have more, but the quality of your friendships is better because you got rid of all like the people who are causing you stress and pain, like all of the gossipers that were making you feel negative or bad. Um, so anyway, they're saying like your relationships are so much more loving now, even if you're not keeping in contact as often with people as you were uh, historically. And you know, honestly, I feel like you're loving yourselves a little bit more. Like you're not as hard on yourself as you used to be. And this isn't always the case, especially in the middle of the month for you, that won't be the case. But just kind of remember that everybody slips up from time to time and that you are doing the right thing. You're making a lot of progress and you're really caring for yourself and, you know, also protecting your heart when you are um, focused on your growth, okay? So good for you guys. Uh, they're saying, you know what, it was a lot of hard work and sometimes it's exhausting, but you're doing it and, you know, bravo. Cute. Okay. And when I say they say that, I mean like your spirit guides, your angels. <laughs> so what's going on with your money and career this month? And they're saying, so this might be that area where in the middle of the month you're like, ugh. And you might be a little bit more focused on the negative than the positive things. So like they say this is just an opportunity though for you to start looking for different opportunities. To increase your wealth one way or another. To switch jobs. To move. Um, it could be like a lateral shift. It could be a promotion. But you know, when you're starting to feel the blahs, this is an opportunity for you to either start your own business or something like that where um, let's try to frame it that way because the, if the time is right for you to do that and that's why you feel that way. Now what they're saying is a lot of you feel like this is going to be challenging for you because it's not a quick and easy thing to do and then you also wonder like, okay, is this just going to take me backwards to that place of emotional instability again? Is this going to create more stress for me? Like if I were to start my own business, like that's scary because the income is not necessarily guaranteed while this launches. Or if I were to take a new job, what if I'm not accepted there by my colleagues or my peers? What if I don't do a good job and then I'm back to looking for another job right away? Or what if everybody gets laid off? Things like that. Like you're concerned about how this will affect you emotionally, but they say, you know, it's also challenging for you to really connect with your intuition when you're feeling that way, when you're feeling stressed. So the more that you can do that, whatever your preferred method is, whether that's yoga, prayer, tarot reading, whatever, um, that's going to be the best route for you because you're going to get a lot of assurance and confidence from that. They say certain things in your life are supposed to end. And if you do not make the decision in order to like start new opportunities, to take new ones, um, you might just be in this kind of situation where you're forced to. So this could be like, surprise, we're bankrupt. Everybody's fired. It could be like, surprise, the building you work in burned down and um, nobody's getting paid until we rebuild next year. It could be anything like that. So, I mean, it, I could give you more details in a personal reading. It's going to play out different for everybody. And remember, this is a general reading. So maybe this won't happen for everybody. But it's definitely the Scorpio vibe for the, mar for the month of April. And so um, that's a bit concerning. So if you have the opportunity to put a little money to the side, I would definitely do that. And they say, but more than that, it's not even about financial peril. It's just like starting to talk about or think about at least in advance of whatever upset might occur, what you might like to do next. Or um, reaching out to find different opportunities for friends, colleagues, you know, maybe making a LinkedIn account or whatever. They're saying it's not so much about the money. It's just more about generating new ideas for you that will be better for you in the longer term. Now, in regards to your love life, for those of you who are single Scorpios, by the way, for um, anything related to love, you're going to want to watch your moon sign. Uh, there's a link in the description box below that will show you like a website that will give you your moon sign and your rising sign and all that bullshit for um, free. But anyway, 
the point is, is because our moon sign represents our feelings, our emotional state, who we are on the inside. And when we make our decisions in regards to love, that's where they come from, right? They don't come from other people's ideas of how we appear or show up in the world. They come from our inner deep self. So that's what I would recommend. But let's see what you got if you're single. They're saying like through this new business opportunity, through this move or whatever, whatever this day-to-day new thing is in your routine is where you might potentially meet a partner. They're saying that um, this is only the case though if you're really showing like love for this new situation. So let's say for example based on that career section where you got laid off or something and then you go and you take a new job and people can tell like you're not really thrilled to be there. It's not the kind of job that you wanted. It's just kind of like a stopgap measure. This isn't going to apply for you. You're not going to meet the right person there. But if it's something that you're actually feeling good about and you're like, okay, I can frame this as a positive opportunity um, or I'm going to, you know, give it my best shot, then there is potential to fall in love with somebody that you either meet via work or at work, um, which could be scandalous in its own way. But they say that um, there's no decision really that you have to make at this point in time, at the time that this reading is coming out. Because as I said, this is going to occur more in the middle towards the end of the month, but at least keeping your... Um, mindset open to the possibilities, especially if it's a stopgap and it's somebody that you might work with for a moment. Like if you can find a way to enjoy it for the temporary amount of time, then it's not going to be an issue when you move on to a different workplace location because they're no longer your colleague and it's safe to date. Um, but they're saying your intuition will guide you with this and you're actually kind of creating, um, the situation where things are really safe and kind of exciting, but not like overly exciting in like a dramatic sort of way. They're saying like the kind of person that you might attract in this sort of situation or circumstance is the kind of person that's like a very stable energy, but they're still sexy. Like, you know how sometimes people can be, you're like, okay, cool. Like low drama. Like you've got like a boring corporate job. Like awesome. Very safe choice. But oh my God, you're fucking boring. I can't deal. Um, it's not that. It's more like, Okay, yes, stable, good, reliable, dependable. That's the kind of partner I want. But then also, you're fun or you're funny and we have adventures on the weekends, okay? Now, anything else for singles? They're just saying that, um, you know, this is not the... For those of you who are likely to find love in the month of April, it's not going to be through online dating or, you know, through Facebook or something like that. They're saying that... If you are to reach out to people that way, like be the aggressor or starting communication um, through those methods, for whatever reason, you might come across sort of bitchy even though you're not. Um, but it's actually not a bad thing because all that means is that that kind of person, like don't get upset if they're like, hey, you're really arrogant or you're kind of a bitch or ooh, that was harsh. Don't take offense to it because you know what? That's a weak person. That's not the kind of person you want to be with. You want to be with somebody who's strong and deep like you are, you know? So that kind of person couldn't handle you anyway, which means that they are not right for you. Um, they're saying also anybody from your past, any uh, exes and stuff, should they come back? Hell no. Okay. At least not this month. So for those of you who are coupled Scorpios in the month of April, we got, ooh, this should be like a lusty, fun, adventure -y kind of month for you, but not in a like, hey, we're going on a romantic vacation. It's nothing like that. It's just like making the most out of building Ikea furniture together or taking a bike ride without a specific destination in mind and trying a new restaurant. It's that kind of energy. They're saying that um, you and your partner might be kind of looking at the future and kind of assessing like risk versus reward in certain areas of your life and wondering like, hey, is this thing going to be worth it? Like I'm kind of excited about it, but I don't really know. What do you think? And they're saying that like you're definitely right to be a little bit cautious, it seems to me like for most of you, even though Scorpios are traditionally a bit cautious, that your partner is more the one who is going to be um, cautious in this regard. And you should maybe heed their war warnings. Listen to them um, more than just hearing them, if that makes sense. 
they're saying like you don't have to make a decision about anything pertaining to you know the trajectory of your relationship right now or um, what you're gonna do about where you live or where you're going to get married or you know should you have kids or not they're like it's not it's not that urgent right now. Just talking about the pros and cons and really listening to each other is important and the risk versus reward. They're saying that um, some of you might have a hard time trying to get the things that you want or feeling good about going after the things that you guys want collectively as a couple because you feel like you don't have enough money. And they go, well, that's fucking unfair, right? But if you work really hard, you will in due time. And so they're saying that's why right now isn't the best time to make a decision. Because you know what they say? It's like, there's never a right time to have a baby, for example. The timing is never going to be perfect or right. Okay, that's true. And like, so, you know, throw caution to the wind and you'll cross those challenging bridges when you come to them. Sometimes that's the answer. This month it isn't. So just remember that. Or, you know, trying to work like a new vehicle into your budget or something like that. Or, or moving, selling your house, buying a different one. They say, we really want you to think about the long term and where you want to be when you're like 70 years old. And I don't know why the number is 70, but it is. They say 70 to 73 years old. <laughs> it's oddly specific. Where do you want to be with your partner? And they want you to think about it in that sort of uh, frame of reference and then make a decision either the end of April or in May. They say this will help you kind of become closer and to bond and to deepen your relationships, especially for you. Like you're going to feel a deeper connection and bond to your partner than you have before. Now, for those of you in undefined relationships, what they're saying here is that um, whatever your partner is telling you, it's honest. It's it's true. So if you're wondering if they are lying to you or not, I mean, I guess we should do a personal reading, like if it's something really important, because this won't apply to all Scorpios. But for the majority of you, they are telling the truth. And they are very in love with you, or they're falling in love with you, or they have the intention to. They feel very overjoyed. Now, that's going to be a little bit different depending on what your situation is. Now, for those of you who have just kind of met... If they tell you, hey, I really love spending time with you, but then sometimes they make themselves unavailable and they blame work or something, they're being honest. They really do enjoy you. They just haven't figured out a way to prioritize you yet. Um, for those of you in like a polyamorous relationship, for example, or in a relationship where like you're with somebody who's married to somebody else, um, that kind of situation, it's like, hey, I'm telling the truth. I do really care about you, but it might not necessarily feel like that all of the time. So they say the challenges for all of you guys here is to really believe that, is to really feel it, and then to also kind of allow yourself to express love and good vibe feelings back in return. And then also to be not only honest with yourself, but then honest with the other person and to communicate that stuff. They're saying that um, you have to really think about what you want and what would make you feel satisfied because you don't necessarily know or what you think you want isn't necessarily what you want 100% because once you get it, you might not feel like it is as fulfilling as you think. And so they say the key or the trick to really feeling that is to number one, be honest with yourself, thinking about what it is that you want, what it is you desire, and then allowing yourself to be open to kind of um, be vulnerable, to feel those feelings. Now, they want to say one other thing. They say, we want you to also think about the long term in relationships. And where do you want to be, you know, when you like 20 years from now? 20 to 25 years from now, where do you want to be? Like, because is this worth it or not? Where do you see it going? How do you want it to end up? Because honestly, for a lot of you, you're in an unfair situation. And so it's time to speak your truth about that and to be very vulnerable. And sometimes this is going to require you to be a little bit harsh and to really assert some firm boundaries. But they're like, if you don't, you're going to end up very unhappy. So forward thinking is the way to go in these situations because, look, there are opportunities um, of, like, this wonderful kind of loving energy that are trying to come to you. But because you're, like, in this scenario where you're not creating an environment where you're super open and vulnerable and setting boundaries and, like, thinking ahead, you're not seeing them. You're blind to those. So for some of you... Um, that might be a situation where, like, you kind of, 
you're kind of like hoping for the best, but you know a relationship's not going to work out. So you're not really seeing the other opportunities around you because you're focused on this person that you're with. Or it's like, well, I mean, I'm a little bit lazy to go and meet new people. I'm already comfortable with you, so I'm not 100% happy. But no relationship is 100% happy, so I'll just sit here. It's that kind of a vibe. Now, for everyone not related to love at all, I wanted to pull a affirmation card and just see what we get. And they're saying, money is a state of mind that supports me. I allow prosperity to enter my life on a higher level than ever before. And this is going to be very important to remember in the month of April, which we're in. <laughs> um, in the middle of the month is what I wanted to say. Because it does seem like some of you might have a little bit of a hiccup there, but it's really just a new opportunity that you should take to create more prosperity and financial abundance. So that is April. I love you so much, and I will see you in May. Thanks so much for watching this video and getting all the way to the end of it. I really appreciate your support. If you are interested in other videos, click here. If you are interested in subscribing, go ahead and click here. Hit that notification bell so that you get alerted to when new videos come out and also when I do surprise live streams. And then if you're interested in winning a free 20 minute video uh, reading personally every month, go ahead and click right here. Mwah!